Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. On the summit today, I am joined by the head women's basketball coach for the Texas Wesleyan Lady Rams, Coach Bernita Jackson. It's a privilege to get to visit with you, Coach. And let's get started with your season, which has gotten underway right now. A win last night to open the season. You got to open it at home against Houston Tillotson, coming away with an 85 to 71 victory in in last night's contest. Can you talk about how your team opened up? I thought they opened up pretty well. It was a lot of first game jitters and um, excitement all at the same time. And I thought they defended pretty well. Uh, We got on the glass very well. I was very pleased to see that. Um, But for it to be our first game, no real scrimmages or exhibitions or anything. um, I thought I thought we did pretty well. Got some things that we know we need to work on. But overall, I was very pleased with our effort, our energy, and our focus. So, I'm sure it's always good to start with a W, no doubt. I mean, yes. <laughs> however they look to get that, that first, first win, that's always good. Coach, you had uh, Michaela Coy, 22 points, nine boards, four steals. Mm-hmm. Curtisa Amos with 18 points, six steals. And Zaria Carter with 10 points and six boards as well. We'll talk about them just a little bit later on. But I do want to, to start with you. Coming off a fantastic season in your first year with the program there in Fort Worth last year, 25-7 and seven overall. You were the Sooner Athletic Conference John Hudson Coach of the Year. And the team made a trip to the NAIA National Tournament, too. So uh, bring us up to where we are now. Last year was pretty good. It was. It was. It was, it was good to win, but it, it definitely came with its challenges. Um, but we were definitely um, just really blessed to be able to have a group of young ladies who bought into what we were teaching and were wanting to turn the program around. Because before we got there, they, it was the COVID year. and They only won one game. A bunch of the games got canceled because of COVID. Um, and so when I came in, it was a very different style of play, a very different tempo, um, a very different standard. But I thought that the young ladies did a great job of buying into what we were teaching. And then when we, you know, started playing games and we started out 8-0, you know, that always helps with getting players to buy in, you know, because they're like, okay, this actually works. So um, it went well. We were Um, getting some votes to be nationally ranked, even though we never broke into the top 25, but just very proud to go from pretty much the bottom of the Sooner Athletic Conference to finishing in third place Um, and then going from one win to 25 wins last year. um, That was one of the largest turnarounds, probably might have been the largest turnaround in the country. So, um, but it came with its challenges and it came with its, um just trying days if you will um but overall we we really had a good group of young ladies that they wanted to win they wanted to compete and they wanted to you know leave a legacy and do something that would last a little bit longer than just you know just them and their individual stats if you will or accolades so well coach i I wish i had that number in front of me i did see that there was a 24 game turnaround which i can't imagine too many turnarounds being any bigger than that but what a fantastic fantastic year for you all and finishing in third place and that leads us into this year as you all are picked second in the Sooner Athletic Conference according to the preseason coaches poll talk about this year's team and and what do you see in them yes this year's team um looks a little different from last year's team so last year um we worked hard and we had to work hard to beat people and and we had to you know just really buy into the details. Um, We had to rebound in order to win. Like it was just, we we had to kind of make up for some other things that we didn't have. We didn't shoot it real well from behind the arc. So, um, you know, we just, we had to do a lot of game planning and strategizing. Now this team this year, we brought in some shooters. Um, We brought in some junior college transfers that can help us uh, stretch the floor defense on defenses. And then um, our bench is a lot better this year. So uh, we'll be able to press and even play even more of tempo, which I'm excited about. And we'll be able to hopefully uh, push the pace, push the tempo. We'll continue to rebound like we've always done, uh, but we should be able to get a little bit more efficient as this team begins to gel and understand kind of what we're looking for and, um, you know, the shots that we want to see you know, within the flow of what we do. But um, it's it's still kind of early, but I think 
so far, they're getting it, they're buying in, and they're really um, starting to gel as a unit, which is what what we would like to see as a team. So um, they look they look good, though. You know, they there's a lot of stuff that we left on the table that we feel like is stuff that we could fix. And um, they came into practice ready to fix it today. And then hopefully next week they'll stay focused and engaged on controlling what we can control. Because at the end of the day, that's all that, you know, me as a coach can expect of them. And so as long as we stay focused on that, I think we'll be fine. Coach, you talk about being excited to be able to play up tempo. And, and for the fans, I'm sure they're excited as well because watching a, a winning program is one thing. Watching a winning program that has that fast pace and it's just fun to watch. I'm, I'm sure your fan base is appreciating that. We're speaking now with Bernita Jackson, who is the head women's basketball coach at Texas Wesleyan here on Midwest Sports Net. And I encourage you, please take the time, like this video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. It really does help as we are covering small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And Coach, I mentioned, let me mention those names again. Michaela Coy, Curtisa Amos, Zaria Carter, all players who were recognized with conference accolades postseason last year. Carter, also the freshman of the year as well in the SAC. So uh, tell us a little bit about them. And you mentioned some transfers. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, Zaria Carter was a freshman last year. She averaged about 16 points and 10 rebounds, which is unreal uh, for a freshman to come in with that uh, just level of confidence if you will to the college level at any level and to be able to average a double double um but she looks good we worked on kind of polishing up some of her skills in the off season and so we're excited to see her um just continue to blossom uh we know that that you know she can run the floor we know she can rebound she's a tough matchup but she's about a 6-1 forward um nice nice soft touch around the rim rebounds hard and and uh just gets us some easy baskets inside and then Curtisa Amos she was a uh, all-american last year for us she averaged about 18 points a game and about four rebounds and two steals and she was also named to the all defensive team last year and she's definitely one of our top defenders she's just a long lanky 59 athletic guard or wing player and she can guard on the ball or off the ball and she just gets after it defensively which honestly fuels a lot of her offense so uh, we're excited to have her back and then Michaela Coy uh, she is one of the young ladies that was here before I got here that um, has just been such such a huge blessing and um, just has bought into the new style of play that's different from before we got here um, but she has transitioned and adjusted very well. Uh, she's very skilled, about a 5'11 forward as well. She can shoot the ball um, from inside or outside. She is a rebounding machine. And so between her and Zaria Carter, um, you, you know, it, it's it's going to be tough for teams to, to keep us off the glass. Um, but she just she just has another one, soft touch around the rim, can shoot the ball, you know, she she's really coming into her own. And, you know, the other night she only ha she had uh, 22 points and nine rebounds. And first thing she said to me after the game was, coach, I was one rebound away from the <laughs> double double. So so she's looking to uh, continue to get better. But I thought it was a good start, you know, to her senior year. And um, we're excited to see where she goes. Um, as far as the newcomers coming in, we're really excited about, we got a freshman out of the Washington area. Her name is Deanna Barbie. She can shoot uh, the ball from deep. She also is buying into how we play defense, getting into passing lanes, pressuring the ball. Uh, pretty good passer, good floor vision, high IQ. Comes from a coach's family, so she's the coach's kid. And so she doesn't mind you getting on to her or coaching her a little bit, which helps my job. Um, but uh, she can definitely shoot and she'll help us stretch the floor um, as well as we have uh, another junior college transfer, Taryn Wills. She actually started at a Division One university, went to TJC, so Tyler Junior College for two years and just came off of a national championship. So uh, we're excited to see her kind of get loose a little bit with us and and um, just help us win the way she helped them win. But Taryn is definitely a Division One talent. Uh, she's a steal 
and we're excited to have her as well. Uh, we have another post player, Kiara, uh, Kiara Felix. She went to Pima Community College where they won their conference. She'll also help us inside with, you know, the paint presence, scoring inside, rebounding, and uh, defending inside as well. Um, and then we have another guard from Coastal Bend. She was All-American Honorable Mention, and she averaged about 18 points a game as well. She can fill it up as well. So we definitely have a lot of firepower on this team. Um, another another guard, a freshman guard, Zaria Ty. She's out of the San Antonio area. She can shoot lights out. Um, but I think the challenge is going to be getting all of them to trust each other, to trust what we do as coaches, because you might not need to average 18 points a game. And so getting them to share the ball and work together and trust that they'll get the ball back is something that we're working working through. But but they're working hard. They're coachable. You know, they're doing all the things that you would like them to do so that we can continue to just get better each day. Coach, you you have more going on than than just there at the, at the university, which by the way is a lot. Uh, full plate to be a head coach, I, I know. But uh, your husband is an assistant coach working with you, and together you also have KBJ Academy, which is another opportunity to to teach skills and culture and all those things you just mentioned. Can you talk about that for a moment? Yes, absolutely. So KBJ Academy is a business that um, my husband and I started in 2014 and it actually came you know on the heels of a very traumatic experience we were coaching at lon morris college and um doing well turned the program around it was a losing program and within the first year we were playing in our first championship game so uh similar to when we came here and then in 2012 they announced they were closing the doors of the school and so we were left, both of us, without a job. And um, from that, we just, you know, we're people of faith. We prayed and was asking God, what should we do? I mean, is this a sign to get out of coaching? We didn't know. Um, so we went on. We helped all those kids get scholarships somewhere else and continue doing what they loved. And then we went on to Cisco College. And from there, we just started writing down these ideas of, things that helped us be successful, things that helped us turn the program around. And um, from that, we birthed the business KBJ Academy. And um, ever since we started it in 2014, we have done skills trainings, camps, team building, all kinds of things. We've traveled the country. Um, we've, we've helped over 4,500 student athletes go on to play at the next level. Um, and we've trained several as well several hundred as well, and just been blessed to use our gift of coaching to help other people be successful. Um, and we actually sat down in 2018 and wrote a book called Play College Basketball. And that book is all of our experience and knowledge from the recruiting process to even how to be successful when you get to college, you know, how to become a part of the team and, and how to, you know, enjoy your journey of playing college basketball because it's a business. And at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people go, but not a lot of people finish. And so we wrote a book to help student athletes be successful and to help parents and their kiddos make more informed decisions. And that book is available um, on Amazon. It was actually ranked in like the top number 18 as far as sports books to read in 2021 um because a lot of people were you know just saying that they were able to actually sit down and put a practical plan together to go play at the next level so um although that was a traumatic experience that started it we believe that uh, we were able to get something out of it and help a lot of people from it and honestly i don't know if we would have ever sat down and put all of our thoughts together like that to help other people in a book had we not gone through that experience so um, I didn't like it then, but I get it now, <laughs> you know, and and I get that the gift that uh, we were using to just benefit those 12 girls on that team was something that, you know, God wanted to use to to benefit others. And um, I probably wouldn't have never been open to doing team building retreats or been open to doing camps and clinics across the country had I not gone through that experience. So. Definitely grateful for it. We also uh, host two different podcasts, Coffee with KBJ 
and Hoops with KBJ. And Coffee with KBJ is just us motivating people uh, using sports and business in life and how it all just kind of intertwines. And then uh, Hoops with KBJ is just us talking, talking sports, talking basketball. And both of them are on iTunes, Apple Play, anywhere you can get get a podcast so just enjoying you know doing what we love and and helping other people along the way and i appreciate getting to uh to see what you have to say as well i've been following you for a little while at least on twitter on social media and we'll check out the podcast too but uh always motivational always something to make me smile so i appreciate when i when i see that uh you come up on my twitter feed that that is cool well coach uh, listen i i know the basketball season is just now underway with at least again a a win under your belt there to get things started and next week things get going again so you got some time to to work out those kinks you were talking about november 10th Mm -hmm. you're going to be at home again taking on lsu shreveport then on the road at tyler against uh, texas college on on november 12th and then the sooner athletic conference schedule gets underway on the road at oklahoma city university so uh talk a little bit about to where you're going from here yeah, so uh, Thursday against LSU Shreveport, they are receiving votes to be nationally ranked. So that is going to be a huge challenge for us to try to put together four solid quarters and beat a really good team. Um, and then going to Texas College, one of the things that we want to be better at this year is just being really good road warriors. And uh, we did a good job of taking care of business at home last year, but there were some road games that we just we we didn't necessarily show up and play you know our style of basketball and it took us a little while to get going so um we we got to address that early this year um because like you said the very next week after that is oklahoma city we're on the road for that game and those games start to count in the sooner athletic conference so um oklahoma city's got a new coach but they're very talented i think that they're going to be um definitely a team to watch out for and then john brown university comes to us and they are always highly competitive always in the top of their league and so we're gonna get tested early and we're gonna have to you know be disciplined we're gonna have to be a confident and cohesive unit and we're gonna have to trust our teammates and trust that you know uh, it's not necessarily about me getting accolades but us winning and so um, I think they're getting it, but definitely I think this week coming up will be a huge test for us against LSU Shreveport. But um, I think the Sooner is going to be very highly competitive this year. I've been looking at a lot of the signees in the league, and I've been watching the games online, and I've been spying and trying to see what everybody's doing. And and um, the we, we have really good coaches in this league that – definitely do their job they scout and they put together a good game plan so we're gonna we're gonna have to be ready we're gonna have to be disciplined and we're gonna have to come out firing on all cylinders and and doing what we can to push tempo and make people play to our pace well coach you're right and the the sooner athletic conference is always a tough conference year in and year out and i think this year is going to be very very tough again but good luck to you if texas wesleyan picks second again in the preseason coaches poll in the sac coach bernita jackson thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit i appreciate getting to visit with you and we're going to be following you all you all this year awesome thank you so much for having me 